Good morning, Lehigh. I'm Ariel Ranker, and this is Real Lehigh News, your most trustworthy source for up-to-the-minute coverage of the happenings, politics, and scandals of Lehigh University. Campus squirrels have officially unionized. This past Monday's formation of the Lehigh Squirrel Union, or LSU, closely follows similar initiatives at Yale, University of Virginia, and UC Berkeley. At a meeting held on the UC front lawn, head union organizer Twilliam S. Whiskers reportedly called for the abolition of the groundskeeping department and the removal of lids from all on-campus garbage cans. Addressing the crowd, Whiskers confirmed the union's support for unity between Lehigh's rodent, human, and lanternfly populations. Without true cooperation, selflessness, and trust in the scientific community, Whiskers said, we will never be able to end the human pandemic and restore miscellaneous food waste to trash cans across campus. Among his other demands, Whiskers also confirmed that the union will not compromise on the squirrel population's legal right to walk really close to you and stare for an uncomfortably long time. The union plans to begin formal negotiations with the president's office within two weeks and promises that they will end before it comes time to bury nuts in November. Following a dramatic increase in on- and off-campus COVID-19 cases, the Lehigh Health Center has announced plans to place a giant dome over the entirety of Lehigh's campus. The dome will be made of 24 inches of solid bulletproof glass and will be completely inescapable. All Lehigh students, faculty, staff, and administration will be placed under the dome to completely isolate the school from South Bethlehem. In related news, tuition will also be raised by $2,000 this semester to account for the cost of the dome. Financial aid will not be adjusted to compensate. Greek life at Lehigh has been faced with new challenges this semester as the COVID-19 pandemic forces many students to attend school entirely online. However, an anonymous source assures us that his fraternity is taking the challenges in stride, especially when it comes to recruitment. Fraternity recruitment leaders have taken inspiration from Lehigh art and design courses by assembling boxes of essential equipment for the recruitment process and mailing them directly to pledges so they can participate in their own home. Supply kits include a can of Four loco, a jewel device with extra pods, a funnel, a cloth hood, a wooden paddle, and a small plastic bag containing 1.5 ounces of cocaine. Lehigh students' ingenuity truly persists even in the darkest of times. We wish our new freshman pledges a lit virtual rush. Lehigh has once again released plans to remodel the University Center. The latest versions of the blueprints feature rectangular shapes, very few windows, and large, blank brick walls. In a school-wide announcement, the Office of Development praised the designs as avant-garde, brutalistic, and postmodern. In multiple interviews, however, students and faculty described the building as having so little taste or artistic merit that it could have been designed by Dilbert spilling coffee on a CAD program. A design professor who has been working with the building's architects told Real Lehigh, quote, We're looking to get away from the classic style of university architecture that so many of us know and love. We understand that half our incoming freshmen only applied because Lehigh looks like Hogwarts, but we're here to show them that they have no taste and don't have a deep enough appreciation for modern architecture. We need to stop thinking Harvard, Yale, and Cambridge and start thinking Idaho State University and Montgomery County Community College. The new addition to the UC will join other architecturally acclaimed Lehigh buildings such as McGinnis Hall, Neville Hall, almost all of Mountaintop Campus, and the utilities box behind Wilbur Powerhouse. LU facilities declined to answer whether Lehigh's computer systems, curricula, and dormitory AC units would be modernized as well. Following the diagnosis of 27 more off-campus COVID-19 cases yesterday, Lehigh University has decided to bravely take a stand against the two gravest dangers of our time, lab classes and six-person gatherings. Lehigh's head football coach said in a statement, quote, There's a chance that our infected student-athletes could attend on-campus classes with other students or invite one person into their five-person houses. These people could contract COVID and then spread it back to other student-athletes. Because of this danger, we simply cannot allow in-person courses to continue threatening our prestigious sports program. The administration has suggested that biology students with in-person labs should, quote, just find a cure for COVID already if you want to go back to class so bad. 
students with on-campus jobs are reminded that Wendy's is always hiring, and anyone who has been using the library to print their exams should proceed to... Oh, wait, hold on a second. Oh, they're just screwed. The university has decided not to test the remaining living members of sports teams that have confirmed positive cases. Additionally, tests will not be offered to those who are asymptomatic, even if they suspect exposure. The university recognizes that some students want tests because they have nothing else to do, they don't need their extra saliva, or they simply enjoy being lobotomized by a cotton swab the size of the Empire State Building. However, Anyone seeking tests for recreational reasons such as these will have to pay out of pocket at CVS, as Lehigh can only afford to dip into its $1.4 billion endowment to test students for serious reasons. As President Simon said in a school-wide email this morning, quote, If you can walk and you can breathe, you cannot get a test for free. We would not, could not even deign, for we see no financial gain, not in your room or on the grass, not over Zoom, not after class. We will not test you here or there. We will not test you anywhere. That's all the news on Fit to Print. I'm Ariel Ranker, my green screen is a tablecloth, and this has been Real Lehigh News. I'm missing me. Blah, blah. <laughs> Hello, Lehigh. I'm Ben Metz, and on today's episode of Metz Meets, I'm meeting Mr. Andrew Johnson, a professional Dew reviewer. Mr. Johnson is a connoisseur of Mountain Dew beverages and regularly posts reviews of limited edition flavors on social media and his Twitch channel, Juicy underscore J, both capital J's. Mr. Johnson, hello, and thank you for joining me today. How are you? Howdy. I'm uh, doing pretty good. Now, first question. How did you become a do reviewer? I mean, kind of just started pretty uh, spontaneously. I always liked uh, the Mountain Dew Baja Blast flavor, right, from Taco Bell. How long should one decant for a richer flavor of Mountain Dew? So you don't need to, you don't need to have it uh, too long, you know. 
just, just a little bit. Now, which flavors do you think are best served cold versus at room temperature? Honestly, I'm going to have to say all of the flavors. Every okay. single flavor is better cold than room temperature. If you are to drink uh, the dew out of a glass, is there a, a best cake appropriate for drinking that? If you've ever heard of the, uh, the Das Boot glass, it's a, a giant glass in the shape of a boot. That's definitely the best glass. What is the most masterfully crafted dew flavor you've ever reviewed? Well, the classic would be to say Baja Blast. I will say there's a flavor called Atomic Blue. It's really good. Um, it's it's a really really aggressive blue color, almost like Tide laundry detergent. Ah. But the taste is nothing like that. The taste is just a pure, delicious lemonade flavor. So Last time I, I tried Tide, it was not very good. So it'd be good to have something that looks similar, but not not tasting like that. Conversely, what what do have you consumed that has like too high of reviews? You know. I think most most overrated do definitely Mountain Dew Voltage, the the Blue Dew, and uh, most people love the Blue Dew. I don't really like the flavor. It's kind of like berry, but not. Now, we're about to go into section two, which is really going to test test your skills as a Dew reviewer. So you're all set. Then let's all do. All right, all right, let's go. Mountain Dew is owned by Pepsi. Would you choose Pepsi over Coke? Before coming to Lehigh, I would have definitely said Coke, but. After four years of only having Pepsi, I'm going to have to say Pepsi, just because I've been brainwashed to think Pepsi. The Dark Knight Rises promotion inspired a permanent 24-ounce version of Mountain Dew. In 24 seconds, I need you to name as many flavors of Mountain Dew as you can. Go. Oh, as many flavors. Okay. Uh, Voltage, Original, Code Red, uh, Livewire, Volt... Oh, I already said Voltage. Um... Spark, Berry Monsoon, Baja Blast, Atomic Blue, um, Electric Apple. Uh, hmm. The pineapple one that I can't think of. Maui Burst. All right, there we go. Now, the fast food chain Wendy's is known for having savage tweets on their Twitter account. If you ran the Mountain Dew Twitter account for a day, what savage tweet would you write? I'd probably just call out I don't know, Mellow Yellow for being dumb. Because, like, who drinks Mellow Yellow? It's just worse Mountain Dew. In 2007, Mountain Dew crafted and began marketing their line of Game Fuel. If I'm not a true gamer and I drink Game Fuel, what's going to happen? You'll become a true gamer. Oh. That's a, it's right. a full transformation. RGB everything as soon as you drink it. Give, give us more on your opinion of Baja Blast, and specifically what meal pairings you would recommend with it. Well, Baja Blast, I mean, you got to go with the Taco Bell because that's where you find it anyway. Typically, whatever $5 box is going on at Taco Bell uh, goes pretty well, but I personally pair it with a chicken quesadilla and also the cinnamon twists. The cinnamon twists are a staple with Baja Blast. And our last question we have for you, what's your favorite brand of soda? Favorite brand of soda? Uh, Mountain Dew. That's the that's easy one. All right. That is all the time and questions we have for you today. So thank you so much for joining us. All right, and thanks for having me. Speaking to all the viewers, go follow his Twitch, Juicy underscore J, both capital J's. Thank you so much for joining us. It was really a pleasure having you. Thanks.
my kids would face a dark day But I wanna tell my children how I kept the night away It's my true But you'll find something that doesn't sit with you and changes Maybe you'll just want to get rich again But find your love work here, the sick And maybe you'll just think the world needs more music Thank you for watching MHTV. If you, like most self-respecting Lehigh students, enjoy this more than the university announcements, please like, subscribe, and comment below. We always read our comments, or we will, when they appear. This week's featured comment is by Olivia White, the first and only person to respond to one of our videos. One day, this could be you.